Hey everyone, so it's Michelle here for Together We Are Mondays, and this week I want to talk a little bit about self-care, because that has been something that has been very prevalent right now in my own recovery, and so I kind of wanted to get the other girls' um, thoughts about this as well. One of the things that I've been learning through the group that I'm working on, which is all about self-care and self-compassion, um, and having just gotten to see a nutritionist who was talking about how taking care of yourself and eating is um, self-care and self-compassion. So that's really what I wanted to talk today about, kind of why we need to take care of ourselves, even though it is hard, like how do we um, recognize that it is important. And that was something that I was really thinking about recently, um, just because, as I said, it's been so prevalent in my own recovery that um, I kind of had to take a few steps back and just be like, okay, let me think. Um, so one thing that I had to do that has been recommended to me was meditating. That is something um, where, I think meditating, everybody knows, but you focus on your breath um, to start out with and you just become present in the moment, basically just practice mindfulness, but really take the time to sit down, to breathe and be there. Um, and so I was taking that time, like, I, it's actually hysterical, I babysit. Um, four days a week, and so every time I'm babysitting, I'll, like, send the kids downstairs, and I'm just, like, sitting there, just, like, you know, so serene, and then they come upstairs, and they're, like, what are you doing, and I'm, like, meditating, yeah, but anyway, so that was something that I had to do to kind of calm myself down and take a look at my center and see why I need to take care of myself, because for so long, like, I haven't been taking care of myself. I've been starving myself, cutting myself, been um, racing to kind of fight and um, go with all the fears that have been confronting themselves, whether it be about food, whether it just be anxiety, whatever. Um, and so that's something that I really think can help, meditating, taking that breath and just pausing, kind of looking at your own recovery and seeing, like, well, where are you at? Like, right now I know in my recovery how... I've been learning the coping skills, I've been learning how to get on and move forward, but that self-care and self-compassion was something that I was just not grasping, and I'm still working on it and kind of recognizing that, like, I can treat myself, and that's okay. Um, one thing that actually hit me, I watched a video recently, and it was talking about the power of vulnerability, which is the best video ever, let me tell you that. Um, but one thing that it said is that those people who take care of themselves recognize that they are worthy of love and compassion and understanding. And it's so important to have that relationship towards yourself because when you live in a world where you're not in love with yourself or you're not comfortable, you're not taking care of yourself, it is one that is painful, often shameful and guilt-ridden um, life. Like that's not, in my opinion, a good life to live. And, like, one thing, like, I know I've been stressing this, like, for months now, but, like, positive affirmations, building the self-confidence, building the self-esteem through recovery, but really focusing in the recovery at the nurture part, the nourishment and nurture that you may not have received as a kid. Maybe you did and um, the disorder developed out of other things, but recognizing that some people may not have been there for you in the way that you needed them to be, and yet you need to be taking that role on yourself. And so, for example, with me, my family has, like, my, specifically my parents have not been supportive at all in my recovery, and that is just so hard to deal with. And sometimes, like, you know, the eating disorder thoughts are just like, oh, well, mom didn't make a vegetarian meal, so you can get away with not eating because I'm vegetarian and there was nothing for me. And I kind of was playing into that. But one thing that I'm realizing now is that, no, like, I have to take care of myself. That's why, like, I always write at the end of any message that people send me, I always write, take care. And I think that is so important, especially realizing that we need to take our eating into our own hands. We need to take um, our mental sanity, fight for recovery, go to therapy, work through things. Um, and that it's okay to take care of yourself because we are capable of being loved and cared for. But as I was saying to somebody recently, I'm not sure who, but um, somebody messaged me and I said, the greatest love story is one with yourself. If you can be madly in love with yourself and just have such high esteem and such comfort in your own skin, that to me is one of the greatest love stories ever. Um, so that was basically what I wanted to talk about, self-care and how it is important because when you live in a life 
full of hatred and belittling thoughts and you keep putting yourself down, it makes life so miserable and rotten. And yet when you recognize your abilities but also recognize your um, handicaps, things that you may not be good at, like I know I can't go skiing because I can't, you know, that's not one of my talents. And yet if you asked me to knit, I could knit for you, you know. It's like recognizing what my own things are and recognizing that's okay. And taking that me time that I'm saying, taking the time to either meditate, to treat yourself. Like today after work, I went and treated myself to coffee and a sandwich at a cafe that had just opened. And that simple act of treating myself was something that, like, was so weird. And it's like through exposure therapy like that that really can help. Um, so I'd love to hear what the other girls have to say about self-care. The question for this week, I forget what it was. Um, I have a fabulous question. Um, hmm. Let me. See. Oh, I know what it was because I was looking at the um, the way that I got this question actually was. I'm wearing a green shirt, there's green pillows behind me, and my wall is painted green. Um, so then I was thinking about the colors of your house and the walls and stuff. So I wanted to know, what color are, um, like what color is your house painted? Like on the inside, is it um, mostly one color, you know, whatever. Um, so there, my, <laughs> I don't know why. Green is like really big in my family, I guess, because it's like supposed to be soothing, even though things aren't ever soothing here. Anyway, it's supposed to be a soothing color. So we have seven rooms in our house that are that are green. It's kind of a lot. Like, there's green stuff all around, like crazy, and the carpet's green, and I don't know. I guess my mom just, like, really loves green. But anyway, so most of our rooms are green, and then on top of that, we have a few rooms, like, that are um, kind of like a beige and tannish color. And then we have my room, which is bright orange, as you guys can see from any video that I filmed in my room. But I think that's just fun because it's that spontaneity, different, colorful, beautiful awesomeness. So that's the moral of that. But yeah, I want to know, do any of you guys have like one color for your house or are you guys kind of like evenly done? Okay, so that's my wonderful question. I hope all of you guys are well and I will talk to you soon. Bye.